the second comic, The Devil Puppet. <laughs> little wooden fingers stretching, clawing, grasping, little wooden eyes blinking, watching, coveting, scourge of the darkness, terror of the daylight, that is The Devil Puppet. So this story is, is another one of those evil Pinocchio kind of stories. A a down on his luck puppet maker who we see the first few panels being chased out of his uh, being chased out of his house because he's not paying rent. Now it doesn't really specify a time period in this in this one right here, unlike the other one, which was clearly meant to be at 1953, the time when the comic was written. This one could easily take place anywhere from the 1800s to the 1900s. So I'm going to assume it takes place around the same period of the original Pinocchio because it's clearly a Pinocchio, evil Pinocchio story. I mean, honestly, thinking about it, it's kind of funny how common that story is. Anyways, he's being chased out. After briefly buying himself some time with uh, his last possession, he wanders, he wanders a bit till he comes across a magnificent looking tree. And he's just so enamored with it that he has to know more about it. So this random guy teleports out of nowhere. I mean, look at him. He, he, he looks shocked that he's there. He's like, what the hell? Like, like that, just that terrified look on his face. And it's just like out of nowhere. Anyways, this guy asks him about the tree and he, the, the, this random guy who was teleported in tells him that the tree used to belong to a, a prison where they would hang the convicts after enough time. So a lot of evil people have died on it. But for some reason, this doesn't really, you know, cause any sort of moral debate with our puppeteer who's just so enamored with how great the wood is that he sneaks out in the middle of the night and cuts a branch off the tree so he can go make a puppet with it. At first, it seems to be going well. This puppet is a delight. Hit the now, Pierre it makes this grand new act that everyone loves. Soon, he's rich, famous, and his puppet is the fool of the show that everyone loves. However, the puppet, which is actually sentient, decides he's tired of being the fool, and one day wakes up and demand and starts taking control of his own, you know, story. Instead of dying at the end of every show because he's lost his love. He decides instead to kill the female puppet and demand that you will die since you did not love me. Now Pierre's the only one who notices that he's obviously not controlling the puppet. And for a brief moment, he tries to convince himself, but the puppet reveals himself. But this new puppet is so determined to be the part, the star of the show, that to be respected and loved as opposed to laughed at. And so he's able to threaten Pierre into doing the show he wants. And then, you know, he gets so enamored with it, he immediately starts assaulting people in the street. Kind of a big jump there. I mean, like, maybe one panel where it shows a heckler making fun of him the entire show. And then he goes out and assaults the heckler and realizes how much he loves beating people up. Maybe that would have, you know, created that little through line there from, I'm the star of the show, no one will stop me. And I love beating people up too. And it's just... I, I don't see how those two connect, despite the story telling me they connect. But eventually, he decides that he's tired of just being the star of the show. He wants to be a master over life, and decides to randomly kill the lamplighter of the area. This is what I mean when I say I think it takes place around the um, the original time period of Pinocchio, because they still have things like lamplighters. But yes, he, he decides, Now I have tasted the power of death over a human being. Now my emotions are equal to them. Ah! And I feel a new power. A power to destroy, to kill. E -e 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 -e. So the next day, Pierre notices that the puppet is covered in blood. Obviously, he decides that he's done with it. The puppet is becoming too evil, and he can't handle it. So he tries to do something, and this adult, this fully grown adult male, promptly loses a fist fight with a two foot tall puppet. I, I, I don't know what to say, man. That that, that that's embarrassing. But he tries to tell a whole bunch of people about how evil the puppet is, but everyone just assumes he's joking around or he's laying the groundwork for his new stage play. Eventually, he's approached by a rich gentleman who promptly hires him to perform for his fiance. Now, the puppet sees this fiance and takes some of her joking around during the takes some of her joking around during the show as an actual declaration. Like, for example, 
Well, my darling, it seems that I have competition as your fiancé. Come now, Victor. I thought that was sweet of Jojo. I love you, but of course I adore him. And Jojo takes this as an actual declaration of love. So, and Pierre sees where this is going immediately, tries to stop him, promptly gets beat up by the puppet again. Come on, dude. You cannot be losing to the puppet. I, I could take Pinocchio. You can take this puppet. But anyways, the puppet's obsession grows so deeply that eventually he decides that he's going to hypnotize the, the woman who he's infatuated with and control her to go hang herself so he can turn her spirit into a puppet to stay with him forever. At least that's what I think. Out of nowhere, he just kind of gets these supernatural powers to hypnotize and control other people like puppets, despite the fact that he doesn't have this power before and was very much, other than being alive, he was more like, you know, Chucky from Child's Play. He didn't have any supernatural powers, he was just an alive doll. That could kill and no one suspected because he was a small little puppet. But eventually they're able to stop it because people see that the puppet is alive. And Pierre gets down there and burns down the tree before he's able to hang the young woman. Saving her life, but in the process, dooming himself. And there, gibbering idiotically, sat Pierre Goutreau. He had deliberately destroyed himself to save the girl, for the puppet's life had come from the mine, the power of his own brain. And you know what? That's actually a somewhat clever twist for something that, that um, that this in 1950s, in the realization that the puppet was never really possessed by a criminal spirit, but was actually a piece of Pierre's mind coming out. And... All in all, this this I actually enjoyed this one more non-ironically than I did the previous one. So I would actually give this one a 7 out of 10. 